was alone. Wow, a weird first thought to have. Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three, falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to, what's the word? Jump. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right which might, or might not, be important. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No, too obvious. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. had a new theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. 
actually not technically graceful, it's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Opportunity might this switch open up to him? Grace, Grace. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. Was this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. I'm sure he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up, if only for a few levels. was game day. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? <sighs> John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the 
sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years. to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. less immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John.
interesting. A floating target. This would require coordination, balance and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. eventually. She was rubbish at jumping and she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Wait, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not, in fact, dead. It was at that moment that Claire realised she had superpowers! She'd need a cape. There was no getting around that. You couldn't be a superhero without a cape. Claire didn't want confusion. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. You know, floating in water, which was her superpower. All right, fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. Claire needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. just in time. It was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. 